Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donskoy. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko and, and you are listening to the Game to Love podcast. podcast. Welcome back, tennis fans. I'm excited to talk about this podcast. Sorry we're a little bit late. JG fell asleep in the sauna at the gym. Uh, he came out. He'd lost about uh, 30 pounds, apparently. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one I'm excited to talk about. Novak Djokovic, he's been announced. He's in the Serbian ATP Cup team. And JG, I think that might mean that he's traveling to Australia. What do you make of it? Well, before we talk about that, I didn't fall asleep in the sauna. I was just resting <laughs> um, and it was very hot and I enjoyed it. It was very nice to finally relax after a long day's work. And now podcast time and Novak Djokovic, he's in Australia, as it seems. Not yet, but for the ATP Cup, he's announced he's going to be playing it, which would then indicate surely he's going to be playing the Australian Open which would then indicate surely he's been vaccinated or has plans to be vaccinated. Or, Is that a fair statement to learn? Well, we'll get into that, JG, because there might be some other possibilities that uh, people are unaware of. Uh, uh, luckily, Gene, he's shared a few things with me uh, offline, and uh, I'm able to share those with you here today. Uh, Djokovic. Obviously, don't worry, guys. I know how old he is today. 34. He'll be 35 in May. So don't worry. I've got his age nailed down today. <laughs> but let's have a look. Uh, this is the thing that Gene has nicely shared with us. Said, could Djokovic use an Australian Open loophole? Which is quite interesting here. Uh, he could... Apparently, well, there's still obviously the option to get vaccinated as well. We don't know. We're going to find this out at the end. I believe it's either the end of this week. Uh, I think it, yeah, probably all beginning of next week. So we'll find out the actual status of his Australian Open. Well, will he be there or not? So this one, it says Novak Djokovic could reportedly uh, use a loophole to compete in the Melbourne and next month's Australian Open. It said it's believed uh, the men's number one could have grounds to apply for a medical exemption uh, for travel. What do you make of that? What's the exemption then? Why does he get an exemption? I don't know. There, there might be. There must be something like he doesn't want to disclose, like maybe a very private medical uh, condition that he may have. Who knows? So that's uh, that's one ground. Uh, it says apparently Australian officials would need to approve it but it could mean he may avoid 14 days quarantine as well. So that's an interesting uh, new revelation which is coming out here. Uh, they've got another point here saying Tennis Australia is supportive of the bid, which could give Djokovic the chance to win a record-breaking 21st Grand Slam title in Melbourne. So sort of bending over backwards a little bit here to try and help Djokovic come to the tournament put bums on seats maybe this isn't real is it this isn't real we don't know this is fact well, this is just well this is on the this, this speculation but it's from the news uh in australia so well, it doesn't feel with much confidence uh, well i don't know well it says uh the the serbian obviously is locked in for the lead-up event in sydney uh and locked in sounds uh very very official for atp cup i'm i'm hoping it sticks and uh, we get to see this announcement soon that Djokovic will be playing the Australian Open. Well, he's there for the ATP Cup. He's not going to just stay around, stick around for the week, is he? And then go home. And uh, like you <laughs> were saying, Australia is more or less getting into the country, isn't it? That's where the mandate is, traveling yeah. in and out. It's not necessarily related to the Australian Open. So therefore, he must be vaccinated. I don't, I don't, I don't buy this story, what you're showing. I know it's the first time I've seen it. And you're trying to go down this edgy route. But I don't know. I, I wouldn't I don't think that's a good look, mate. If he's if he's having some medical exemption for this and it's not disclosed and it's all private and hush hush. I think that just that it just stinks, man. I don't like it at all. Maybe there will maybe it will be revealed in due course though. We don't know. But they're they're looking down this list of because 
it hasn't been announced whether he has been vaccinated or not yet. There, it's sort of un understand where you're coming from on the last podcast where you're saying it's a little bit attention seeking because now everyone's talking about it. People are yeah, trying to find exactly. reasons to of or ways that he can enter if he hasn't been vaccinated. This type of thing, so it's still up in the air. He might just come out and go, "Yeah, I've been vaccinated, no problems, I'm going," and that just might be the end of it. Or we might go down one of these routes. The, the one thing what did happen, though, since our last podcast, his dad's spoken out quite heavily about this whole thing. And I don't have all the quotes to hand, but well, along the lines now. of the fact that he's more or less saying, um, I don't think my son's going to play the Australian Open because he doesn't think he's going to have a get the vaccine, shouldn't be forced to do it, and it's completely against it, which is fair enough. That's his opinion on it. Um but based off that, it's a bit strange now that we're seeing he's playing the ATP Cups. It doesn't. Nothing's really adding up at the moment. I would sort of, sort of disregard his dad a little bit. Yeah. Do you know How what much I mean? is his like dad talks, involved? Yeah, his dad this. talks a lot of nonsense. I think a lot of dads do, to be fair. Um, and <laughs> with his one, I wouldn't really take what he's saying liter literally. I'd prefer to hear from Djokovic and his team and people around him who are with him more more often. And on that basis, we know that he's going to the ATP Cup. So that is the the latest news we we have, which now means I was it's, probably wrong about his prospect of going to the Australian Open because surely if he's going to play the ATP Cup, he's going to play the Australian Open, you'd think. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's any difference, but obviously the ATP Cup is being played in Sydney and this uh, obviously the Australian Open is played in Melbourne. So whether there is anything, I'm sure once he's, if he's already there, they're not going to deny deny him access to the Australian Open surely not like getting into the country surely is the hardest part here. Yeah, there's a good point in the chat from Phil here Phil sure. Burn saying if that's the case then Alex was right remember that interview Alex did guess he knew something we did not know he's talking about Zverev referring mm. to the fact that he was hoping he could they could bend the rules for Djokovic surely they'll allow him in uh, they'll do whatever they can if this, this what... medical exemption appears I'll be mate I'll I will not be happy. I will not like that at all. I just think I know it, you won't. It's not fair. It's just I but don't buy is... it because it's all happening behind closed door. I don't think it's a good enough reason. I think it just it stinks of the fact that they're just doing whatever they can to get him to play. And this is and what I not, said. And it's just not fair. I thought that this is I was thinking along the same lines when we did the podcast saying is he vaccinated or not. There was part yeah, of me on, thought no he's not missing how to get away with that. Yeah, but no other player generates the sort of revenue or has the sort of legacy i'm sure if it was a rafa or a federer that they're the only probably the only two others that could probably do it in the men's game and have that much weight i mean if rafa was not going to play roland garros due to something they'd probably bend over backwards to try and get him the, into the tournament obviously it's not that that is that isn't the case yeah, but would you not think rafa would have enough integrity to not want to do that yeah, but we're not talking about integrity here. Well, we we're, just talk, we're just talking we about... Are. It's, it's going to be up to him at the end of the day. The reason yeah, they're I'm... having to bend the rules is because he won't be vaccinated. So Yeah, but I'm saying if, you went down, it's his, it's his if we went down another route when it was something else and it was like Federer at Wimbledon or if it was Rafa at uh, Roland Garros and there was just some other reason, let's not say it's not non-vaccine related and it would just be something else to do with a reason they were trying to get him into the tournament. They'd they bend over backwards to try and help him to play it, I'm sure. If whether it be travel bans or things like that, or who knows. I reckon they they still try their best to try and get these players into tournaments. But I don't hate know. It. Hate it. Not it's fair not, at all. But it's, it is what it is. Only really what I'm against in sport. Well, it is what it is at the moment. It's, well, it's not. It's I'll Novak, be totally against it. It's Novak Djokovic, and there's a lot of people wanting to see him uh, defend his title as well uh, as Australian Open I champion. I mean, you can just make the rules up. He's not making them up. That he's taken. If if anything, he's taken a stance, and they're bending over to try and get him in the tournament. He's not saying. Oh. I think we shouldn't talk about this for too much longer no, because it's just I mean, speculation. At the end of the day, yeah, this exactly. is not official. There's no, he's not doing this as breaking news. This is just speculation at the moment. Um, I'm going along the lines of that he's going to plan to get vaccinated now, and that's why he's going to be in Australia. So I think that's how we're going to, that's what we have to assume until we hear otherwise for now. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
fingers crossed, whatever happens, he's going to play there. That's all I want to do. All yeah. I want to see. I would is like to clarify, playing. of course, I'd love to see him there too. I think it will be, it will make it more exciting to have Djokovic in Australia. We got Mike Dixon here with a tweet saying Novak Djokovic is officially on the list for next month's Willie Way an exercise for the ATP <laughs> could uh, could be his way of quietly admitting he's had the vaccine, but he hasn't confirmed anything yet. Oh, keeping everyone in suspense as always. He should have worked in a theater, I think. Novak Djokovic, he's uh, he's got a very really good uh, element of suspense that he's able to to bring to the sport. So, or you could just call it attention seeking, but whatever way you want to dress it up, right, here's exactly. the draw for the ATP Cup. Yes. And we're going to have Team Serbia in the same group as Team Spain. Of course, Team Spain dropping down the seeds now without Rafa. So they're going to be in the same the same group. We've got Norway, Chile making up the numbers in that one. Uh, group B, though, what a, t- what a group that is. Oh. Especially if Dominic teams there. I'm not sure if he's been announced there. I know we've got a Morgalo tweet. Maybe we could look at that in a minute. Yeah, but yeah. this team, for me, is the, well, the number one team, let's be honest, Russia at the moment. Yep. We spoke about them. They won the ATP Cup last year. They've recently won the Davis Cup. They've looked just the strongest team by a long, long, long way. And yeah. I'll be shocked if they don't win this one as well. But in their group, they're going to have a really tough opposition in Italy. Serious team. Australia, they can yeah. cause some damage. They're a good team. We saw what they did a few years back. And of course, it is in Australia. So the, the crowd will be supporting them if there is any crowd. Yeah. And in Austria, pretty good team. With Dominic team that. Dennis Novak. Yeah, they're decent. I think, I think group, if... group B is the toughest group. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and having team a look... is playing. Cheers for that, Gene. Yeah, having a look down here, I think uh, Group C is not too bad either. To be to be honest, yeah, it's Germany, incredible. Canada, Great Britain, and the USA in there. Mm. So some really top players. Obviously, uh, Sasha Zverev. You've got obviously Shapo, Felix. You have got Norrie will be in there as well. All players who have been pretty decent. Team USA, probably the, the weakest one, I'd say, out of all of them. Are they? I don't maybe know. Really maybe. Is Isner going to be there? <laughs> wow. Well, Isner Corda? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Fritz? I wouldn't Fritz, say they're weak, Fritz. mate. CFO? Oh, your favourite. <laughs> How do we that's figure That's out? a really good group. I think Group yeah, D is good. a bit of a, a weak attempt of a group, if I'm honest. I don't know who's yeah. going to get out there. They've done everything they can to try and get Sitsipas to get out of the group. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, he's playing with three dunces who can just about pick up a racket. Um, dunces? What? His brother? His brother. <laughs> well, we'll go through the team, but I'm trying to be nice about Team Greece, but it's, St- it's Stefano per- Sissipas and the per- rest. Pervia Lakers, I mean. <laughs> Terrible. I'm sorry. They're not good players. And they're trying everything they can do to try and make Steph get out of the group. He's got Poland, Argentina, Georgia. I know it's Georgia, they've got... Basiasvili, um, Poland's got her catch, of course. That's good. But there's not really much depth in any of the teams, really. I don't think Swartz. Argentina, Swartzman. Um, yeah, we can have a look at the actual uh, teams yeah, anyway. That's what I was hoping we can do, yeah. Right, okay. So this is, uh, well, they've listed them like this. So we can have a look at some of the teams in this order. They're not actually listed in the uh, in the groups. But we, well, we can flick back and forth if need be. So as you can and I see, see Brody in, there, I like that. Yeah, he was doing well at the bass or the back end uh, of last year. Doing well in the challenges, wasn't he? Yeah, so, so yeah, not a bad group. All the same names you'd expect. Yeah, uh, yeah. moving down, Russia's one, of course, super strong. Yeah, uh, you've got so Sifuli in there though, filling in for hatching off. Yep. Argentina, Del Bunny, Swartzman, Correa. Uh, the others more well, double player, doubles players. Yeah. Don't mind Germany. I think they've got obviously a really good doubles team in Puets and, and yeah. Croets. That's a good team. Of course, Dominic team is going to be there, but Dennis Novak is okay. Mm, I think I think they're going to struggle in the group they're in. Austria could could really struggle, especially Dominic team coming back to fitness. Yeah, we'll see how I, like, he is. I like Germany. I think they could do well. Yeah, I've probably more than. Listen, I don't think I'm not sure if GB gets out of the group. I think it's going to be it's tough. tough. Yeah, it is really tough. Um, I think the, the the doubles is something that we're going to have to yeah, rely on pretty Agreed, heavily. Yeah. We've obviously got Jamie Murray, Joe Salisbury in there. I think the doubles, that yeah. we're going to have to hope for yeah, like Cam Norrie to do a to do a number. Dan Evans can turn up on his day, but yeah, the doubles if we can pick those up on it on each of the uh, matches, I think 
could uh, stand a good chance. But yeah. move on to the next one. Here you go. <laughs> it's the, the team, your favourite team. We've got Thanos team. there. Do you want to uh, go through these names? Is it, what's Thanos? Isn't he a Marvel character? Maybe. Maybe they big brought him in. Brought him Thanos. in. What's he going to do? <laughs> brought him in specially. Well, Chile, Chile's only got three players. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Is, is Chile in the same group? <laughs> I don't think they are. I don't, I don't <laughs> think they're there. They're in there. Oh, Serbia, God. Norway, Chile, and Spain. That must have been topped up. Surely they can't be, have just three players. Well, I can't name any others, so maybe it's, it's just them three. It's just those yeah, three. They, them two don't fill me with confidence. Of course, you've got Sissipas and the rest. Uh, and then Italy, let's see who's playing for there. Berrettini, Sina, Sonego, or oh, really Bellelli, Fanini. That's a good team. I like really? that. Italy is dark courses to maybe win the whole thing if it all it's clicks. Spain's nice as well, though, to be honest. Batista Not bad. Good. It's, still a bit, it's a bit second fiddle, mate, without Rafa, isn't it? Not yeah, for sure. I mean, but still, you've got good players in there, though. They're all like top 50 or top 70, I'd say. You're not, got, you're not having to stretch out into the yeah, 200s true. or the 300s to, to to get your team together at like. least they filled the page <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, really. should have got fernando gonzalez on yeah. <laughs> bring him back <laughs> got alex and chile so confident <laughs> they're gonna be knackered mate <laughs> <laughs> poor garen he's gonna be running to the ground <laughs> by the time it gets to the australian open he's not gonna have any legs left uh, right, anyway, last one. Last like one, you yeah. said, uh, Poland, not bad. No, I like it. I like Kasper Zuk as well. Mandrazak, yep. not bad. Uh, United States, they do have Fritz Isner, Nakashima. That's one I forgot. Yep. Of course, Rajiv Ram, really good doubles player. Um, so let's see how that one, how they go. No Opelka. He's, he's not flying over there, is he? I don't believe. I'm not sure. No, yeah, at least not for the... Um... Not for the ATP Cup, at least, I know. Yeah, but... Canada don't fill me with confidence, that team, if I'm honest. <laughs> Why? But, What's um, wrong with it? That's three good. challenger players and then Felix and Chapo are two mentally weak players. They don't I always like turn up. To... They, they like the team stuff, though, I think, those two, because they're very good mates. And Are they in the same group with Australia, or am I getting mixed up? Uh, maybe one sec. Uh, they're in the group with uh, oh, with us. With GB, US, and okay. uh, Germany. I think, yeah, I think GB maybe can get out then. It could be. I think they can. I'm probably, I'm probably going to go GB. I think Germany topped the group. I think Germany going to top the group and it's going to be battle yeah. for second. It's going to be Great Britain and USA. I think Canada come rock bottom last. Yeah, US. Fritz has looked really good lately. And who do they have in their doubles? The US? They've got Raji Ram and Krychek. Mm, Ram's pretty decent. To yeah, be fair. I like that. I took yeah, and Isner can do the doubles if he needs to. Uh, we've got Matthew asking: Is Brooks be still injured? Yes, he is. He won't be there, of course. That's sad. a big loss for the team. Yeah, it really is, sad. Really fun to watch him. Uh, but yeah, but, that's that's sort of an overview of the groups. And this will look though. You've got to no be honest. Curious. No, he's not going to be there. I'm going to be going big on probably Russia again. I still think yeah. they're the team to beat. Um, as an outsider, I'm probably going to go Germany. I think Russia and Germany are the teams who I'm favouring the most. Of course, you've got the Djokovic factor in Serbia. They'll always be running close. Uh, but really, they're the, they're the two I'm going to be sort of highlighting there, looking at the groups and the teams. And here are some of the players who are missing, of course. The Dow, Hatchinov, Alcaraz, Pella, Kvetfa, Godjevic, uh, Jari, Massetti, Apelka, TFO, Korda, Kyrgios, Pospisil and Milman. Quite a list that, isn't it? Yeah. Really, uh, a bit sad. You've got, one, you've got to ask yourself: Is this um, vaccine related? Is this injury related? What do you think the reason uh, this is? Obviously, Rafa. We know he's going to be playing the event after. It's nothing to do with yeah, it. Alcaraz yeah. has just had COVID. I think he's uh, yeah taking some time to recover from that. But the others, I'm not sure what's going on. Curious, maybe just uh, playing on his Kyrgios PlayStation. He's started a new podcast, hasn't he? I don't know yeah, exactly. we discussed that the other day. Rather Not do that. Listen to any yet, but I know he was rating uh, WTA players the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. How good, how good looking they are. <laughs> Sounds about. Have, right. you, have you heard it or not? No, I didn't hear the actual podcast, but I saw that that was the episode title. Him rating all it of might the be female. Clickbait, though. Possible. 
but I think he's dated enough of them, so he's probably going down there grading them. Who knows? <laughs> Feel sorry if you've been one of the uh, the exes that's going to be on that list. You might be getting a low number now. Who knows? Right. Anyway, uh, other news. Uh, very sad news, to be honest. I think we should go on to Bianca Andreescu uh, has pulled out of the Australian Open. Uh, it's very sad to, to actually read this. I was having a little read through this beforehand. And it's not really to do with any one thing, which is the, the more worrying thing for me. It's actually just to, just so that she can recover mentally and physically. So I don't know what's going on at the moment. Maybe she's suffering a little bit with uh, anxiety or something like mentally. Or like a not, She's not feeling herself on the court, she said, that when she's yeah. been out there recently. And she doesn't feel ready to take on a Grand Slam. It's a bit sad, to be honest. I'm it very... is worrying. I'll tell you why, because, of course, we are planning a podcast to be reacting to our 2021 predictions, yep. which we did. And me and you went quite heavy on Andreescu. Of course, she was one of the players who we fancy a lot. We think she's awesome. We actually had her both winning a Grand Slam last year uh, because we know what she's <laughs> capable of. Of course, winning the US Open and beating Serena in that final. It was historic. One of the greatest finals I've seen. I really enjoyed it. It was sort of a break in moment in her career we thought and we thought after that she's going to go on to really great things and back it up she's had terrible injury yeah and since then not looked the same whatsoever uh she was speaking i know we'll go down just there on her tweet in a second but she sure. was just saying about how when she was playing tennis she wasn't her mind was elsewhere and she's just been really struggling and but the problem with this it's not it's sometimes better to be an injury because you just know they're injured, they're not playing. This is something which I feel like could go on for a while. We've seen it with Osaka. We don't really yeah. know what to expect with Osaka now. Let's be honest. I'm not sure. No. Are we going to see her play much this season? I don't is she going to pick and choose? Is she going to come to Grand Slam? What form is she going to be in these playing in these Grand Slams? Is she going to be ready to compete? Is she going to be mentally not in the right place to play tennis? Who knows? Is Andres yeah. going to start sort of follow the same kind of path of the way she is? It's difficult. I don't know. I think... When, when these players have hit the heights at a young age, it does make it difficult, I feel, with all the fame and everything what comes with that, yeah. to be able to move away from the fame and focus on the tennis. But a lot of players have done it in the past, and I'm sure, well, I'm hoping these can as well. But I think the media We've now. got Radu Kanu as well. Yeah, could, this is it, that. I'm hoping she don't follow in the same footsteps as, and as say, these two. Well, this is the fear, isn't it? And the fact that, well... She's probably got even more attention on her than any of these others who won a Grand Slam over the, the past like three or four years, Radu Kanu. She seems like the most marketable uh, like girl on the women's tour, it, it would seem. She's obviously got a Chinese mother. She can speak Chinese as well. She's a very pretty girl. And now she's obviously getting sponsorships left, right, center. And she hasn't even played six months on the tour. And it does worry me, considering this is becoming a slightly more regular thing, that people are speaking out right. about yeah. mental It's problems. becoming a lot more regular. Yeah, I don't like it. And I don't like the fact... There's part of me that loved it when she won it. But now, all the attention, I'm just hoping that she has got her head on her shoulders and is able to handle it and has got the right team around her to sort of shield her from it a bit i think that it is required because you can't go anywhere i mean we witnessed it firsthand we were at the atp champions tour and bear in mind there's legends there for three days the fourth day you couldn't even budge it was like sardines just because emma radu Kanu just turned up for one day and literally media were all over the place so i I can't imagine what it must be like for her. Pro a big culture shock. And it's probably been the same for someone like Andreescu because she's very marketable as well. Seems like very down to earth, very nice and just a big weight on her shoulders. That's all. Yep. Agreed. And let's have a look at her statement. It's quite a yeah. long one. So I don't think I'm going to read it all out. Um, <laughs> it is a bit long. But there's some, I don't know if there's some bits you want to like talk about. There's some stuff what's happening in her life. Her grandmother spent several weeks in an ICU due to COVID infection, something that really hit her hard. So a lot of that yeah. sort of playing and training with matches, not really thinking about her tennis. 
Um, I want to give myself extra time to reset, recover and grow from this, uh, as cliche as that sounds. And then she sort of ends saying, I'll therefore start my season. Uh, or I will not start my season in Australia this year, but will take some additional time to reflect, train and be ready for the upcoming 2022 season. So it does sound pretty positive on the way she ends it, that she's going to still see her. Uh, in 2022, just not at the start of the year. And she's going to pick a time what sort of suits her when she feels ready. And in a way, you've got to respect her for doing that. You'd much prefer her to do this now rather than get to Australia, play maybe a round, battle through it, maybe win it, and then pull out of the second round. We don't, no, we don't want to see that. No, I think we've seen that a bit too much recently, not just in tennis, with a lot of sports. And I would prefer, if you're not feeding up to it already, just don't enter it. I've always said that. And I'm going to go back to Roger Federer as well. I know the Roland Garros one. I don't. I know people get jump on my back for this. I don't think he should have entered that. It's a bit disrespectful to Roland Garros using it as a warm up event for Wimbledon. <laughs> the old classic. <laughs> yeah, I just want to touch on what Matthew's saying here. Whether it's cricket or, or tennis, players uh, a lot more allowance for players to take time out to travel and being away from home. I think this is a very interesting thing to speak about as well obviously the travel that's involved with being a tennis player and stuff like when we spoke to Ferrer he said I'm not really looking to do any uh, coaching and stuff I just want to sit down for a for a year or six months because I traveled for 20 years and it it does probably catch up on you and you, I'm there's part of me thinking when we had this COVID the first like wave of it everybody was sort of forced to go home and stay at home and it was for pretty much like six months or close to a year and some of these people who who probably were used to traveling a lot have got used to being at home around family probably like and with like more loved ones and that is this a part of the reason that now going back out onto the tour can seem more daunting if you are one of these younger players or if you are one of these people with a lot of the media because you're sort of coming straight out of not playing tennis so much and straight back into the limelight again. Everyone's expecting you to be the exact same person you were before we all went into the COVID wave thing because it's affected a lot of people, this whole thing, oh, yeah, mentally, definitely. like yeah. being stuck at home and being not being able to do anything. People aren't going to be exactly the same in the same mental uh, like mind frame, I don't think. Uh, I just think well, it's listen. interesting to think about. I can relate it to my own personal life and what's happening in the world right now. In the US, mass resignations. UK, mass resignations. People are leaving their jobs. It's a workers' market. People are leaving jobs in their masses. And that's just them, them two countries. I'm sure it's happening in other places as well. Yeah. A lot of the reason is because of COVID. People have been at home for so long and they're not really seeing the value in being in an office or wherever they're working, in a shop or in a restaurant if changed the people's minds and the way they think about things, not always for the best, sometimes for the worst, sometimes for the better, but people have changed the way they're thinking and people are doing things differently now. Of course, yeah. that will, you can probably apply that to all walks of life. And in tennis, maybe they're thinking a little bit differently about and reassessing what they've been doing. And um, yeah, it's, it's sad to see. But the one thing I would say, I don't want to be too soft with all of this because as a tennis player, it comes with the territory. Yeah, It's tough. It's hard work, but that's why you're that's why you get paid to do it, and that is why you're a professional tennis player. And there's no job I don't know any job, so it's not tough. You always have some tough spells in your job, things you don't like having to do. And if that's like uh, the, talking to the media or things or certain parts of it or traveling think... here and there, you've got to do that. Do you know what I mean? That's part of the job. Not everyone likes the every single part of it, and you've no. got to do that. And that's that's what makes the champions great, who can deal with the pressure. Uh, better than most. And that's why I like Djokovic's quote where he says pressure's a privilege. Yeah, it really is. And this is what makes me wonder how mentally strong are people who who don't really like that part of the, the whole tennis tour, like going, uh, like traveling around where you, it, it's quite lonely, I'm guessing. I know you have a team around you if you are one of the bigger players, but sometimes there's no place like home and some of these people might, might obviously prefer to be with their families and people like that. I don't know. But it just shows, like you said, the sign of champions and the sign of the people who all they think about when they get out of bed in the morning is 
I'm going out. I'm traveling to there. I'm traveling to the next place. This is the next place on my calendar. It's marked off. I'm going there. No matter what, I'm going to win X amount of things before I retire. It's a small window you get to play tennis. It's only for about 15, 20 years. And uh, make the most of it. Because if you don't, you'll only be looking back after that time thinking, what if? Not always. Some people don't don't enjoy tennis. We've seen that. Yeah, as well. some don't. Yeah, they're just doing it for the living. Like to some people, who don't they're enjoy their job. It. They're literally <laughs> doing it every day, waking up to make their money. They're good at that. What they do, they do it for a bit, and they they can't stand it. They don't want to talk about it outside of work. Uh, and for that's for them, it's a job. For me, it's a dream to be a tennis player. But not all, <laughs> not everyone thinks thinks like that. Certainly, some One tennis day. players. Um, but yeah, it's sort of just wrapping up the podcast. I think we should just sort of move back to Djokovic because uh, sure. that is the main topic here people just joining us late Djokovic has announced he's going to be playing the ATP Cup in Australia we've seen the teams we've gone through that so you have to wind back to the beginning of the video if you want to see that but oh, yeah. what does this mean now is he going to be playing the Australian Open you'd think so would you say percentage wise we're on like 90% certain he's now going to play Australian Open is that fair it's, well he hasn't even it's not him who's announced he's playing the 80 cup they just put out the team sheet <laughs> with his name on it so he's no, I saw something he put his name down i saw something yeah i know so he's obviously in, but but it's not there's no like real announcement he appears he appeared on the atp website list of players committed to the atp cup. exactly this is what i mean but there's no official announcements coming from his way as he's still keeping his cards close to his chest he despite they're, I think he's just letting the press releases do it for him. He's not gonna, he's not gonna speak out. Yeah, he's just gonna just let annoying. them. It's annoying. Just speak, man. It's just frustrating. Yeah, maybe he's just sick of uh, being criticised all the time. Just wants a break from the media. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway, we... I think we'll wrap it up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we are talking about him. Exactly. We keep doing podcasts on it, so we're just as bad. So yeah, that's it. Anyway, mate. let's wrap it up there. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if Djokovic is going to be playing in Australia. We know, well, we're pretty certain he's going to be playing at the ATP Cup now. So let's wait and yeah. see. In terms of groups, I've gone for Russia and Germany as my dark horse uh, as a provisional look. Would you agree with that or do you have something else? Yeah, I think Russia's just a safe bet, isn't it? To be honest, uh, I think out of all of the other ones there, I'd say you can't rule out Serbia just because Djokovic is there. But... I like what you're doing, though. I think Germany are very strong as well. Not my dark... I want so nah. your main pick is Russia. What's your what's your dark horse? <laughs> Just gonna say Chile. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> Chile. Uh, okay. I'll go. I'm going. My dark horse will be Italy. There you go. Okay, that's a good one. In the same group, <laughs> <laughs> it goes out straight away. So your winners coming from Group B. That's for sure. Yeah, that's it, man. Right. All right. Well, let's wrap that one up. Thank, uh, thanks for joining us, guys. We will be coming live maybe tomorrow for our reaction video to last year's prediction. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a funny one. We're going to have some beers for it, and we're going to be laughing at our top 10 predictions, also all of our Grand Slam predictions, and we can see what idiot picked Rafa on to win Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Right, see you guys then. Make sure to like and subscribe.